Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to do a quick recap of the S14 that's behind me here. Uh, for any of you who are new to the channel or just, you know, the other videos are a bit long, maybe you don't want to watch the whole thing. I'm going to instead just give you a quick rundown of all the work that's been done to the intake manifold, the cooling system, and uh, pretty much where I'm going from there. Let's get to it. We're just going to dive right into this engine bay and get going. First thing here, this is the NP boosted intake manifold. Uh, this is kind of a kind of a version of Plasma Man or Otaku. I think there might be another one out there. Uh, link it up in the comments if you can uh, if you can tell me what it's called. Uh, but the one I ordered is out of Vancouver, British Columbia, and it is the NP boosted intake manifold. Let me just tell you. This thing took a hell of a lot of work to get in there. Uh, fitment was, well, it was terrible. And that's just because of all of the coolant lines that actually ran underneath the original stock uh, intake manifold. So look at the video that I posted up if you have any questions about how to get this to fit in there. Uh, what I did, my solution was to actually change the coolant system completely. So down in here, uh, we've got an inline thermostat. It's a dash 16 thermostat. It goes to a Tarx adapter plate that goes right onto the block. And then another thing, it's kind of hard to see, but you can see this line right here is actually a bypass right from it that goes straight into the block. Uh, it's down underneath there. Like I said, watch that video on how to install the manifold. It'll show you what you need to do to get this thing to fit. Moving on, we've got the uh, top feed fuel rail. This one came with the MP boosted intake manifold as well. Um, but I had to buy all these, uh, all these fittings here. So what you see is down there, there is a fuel filter. The line comes up dash six line. It tees off. And this is so that I can have equal pressure in this, uh, fuel rail. So I learned that little trick watching, uh, watching a video about the otaku, uh, intake manifold that Samet had posted up on YouTube. And he had talked about how they used both sides for the feed. And then down here in the middle, a little hard to see, but right down there, that is where it's going to exit out right up into my AEM fuel pressure regulator. And then the lines go right back down and down in the distance there, you can see where I've actually adapted it right onto the hard line. I didn't want to run the dash six line all the way to the back. So I just, uh, I just flared it right there. So we've got the thermostat covered, the cooling system that was underneath is kind of covered and the intake manifold. What else? We've got uh, the Koyo rad was already installed on the vehicle, but there was no fan shroud on it. So what I've done is I actually got a Mishimoto fan shroud and I've adapted it to fit right onto there. There's a couple wires. I'm going to be cutting off these crappy bullet connections. I'm going to go with some nice Deutsch connectors. Okay. We've got as well, the Mishimoto uh, silicone lines coming right there, right here. This one actually had to get cut a little bit just to make this thermostat line up perfectly over here. Let's see. There's a little bit of an adapter plate right in between. Now this adapter plate is uh, going to house one of the sensors for the engine coolant temperature sensor. The car is going to be running a link ECU. So it needs brand new sensors that are going to be highly, highly accurate. What else do we have over here? Well, the turbo is out at the moment. It is sitting right over there, but it's going back in today because I have, where have we got them? New gaskets, new Tomei gaskets. What else do we have lying over here? We got the throttle plate adapter. So this one, um, uh, when you, when you order the MP boosted intake manifold, it actually comes with this massive throttle, uh, but it's still, a, um, a cable system. We're going with an electronic throttle. So what I had to do was purchase this, uh, Superforma. Uh, it's really hard to see. It's nice and bright, but the Superforma adapter goes right onto the end there. And then we've got the Bosch E throttle. That one gets bolted right onto it. We've also got, uh, this is a throttle pedal from, I think it's a 350 or a 370. That's going into there. That's the e-throttle pedal that we need. We've got some phase two motorsport belts that are going to go in today. And then the rest of these are all the sensors that we need to run this, uh, this link ECU. So when I purchased the car, um, if you look back at some of the first videos, you'll see there, there was a lot of work that needed to be done on it. Um, one of the things that still needs to be fixed up is these, uh, horrible welds. There was obviously also some damage here, probably from it being raced before this was actually a registered race vehicle. 
Um, right down in here, we have the Gretti um, oil filter relocation uh, that goes right down into the block there. We're going to mount an oil pressure and temperature sensor down right on the side of that little gold piece there. Probably going to redo these lines. I'm really not a fan of the blue and red, but that's fine. Uh, it's not priority yet. Comes right off of there onto the oil cooler. Got some hella horns to be nice and loud. And uh, yeah, that's about it. You know, a bit of, bit of damage here, but we're going to be cutting this out and going with a tube mat or a tube front end on the vehicle anyways. It's going to be a drift car. So really, uh, really no need to worry too much about this damage. It's just going to all get cut away. So most of the work that's been done has been in the engine bay. Uh, when I purchased the car, it already had the cage in there. The cage actually extends right out, kind of NASCAR style, into the actual doors. Um, no windows at the moment, so I'm going to need to figure out something there. Um, it had kind of just a little knockoff e-brake there. Um, but I've got right down in here, there's a new brake that's going to go in. We've got the steering column is all prepped and ready to go. So that was pulled out. Everything was grinded down because it's going to just be a steering wheel. We don't need any of the turn signals or anything like that. Right over here, dash, same thing. This is just going to be a nice flat face. Go with some nice uh, toggle switches. Maybe the fuses and relays even mounted onto it, old school style. Got the uh, beautiful Sparco race seat installed in there and then some piping that, you know, I just needed some space to store it, but not too much has been done in there. Like I said, uh, when I picked up the car, it was, it was kind of like a barn find. There was a lot of, there was a lot of work to be done, but this here is where I've been focused for the last few months and it's time to finish it off. So let's get on to it. So like I said, it's just a super quick recap. I just wanted to show you where the car's at right now. Uh, today, I've got the whole day blocked off to pretty much uh, install everything else that needs to go into the engine bay. That's all the sensors, the throttle, what else? Some, some nice new stainless steel hardware and the belts. So once I get those into the vehicle, I'll post up another video showing all the work that was done there. And then I'm gonna move on to the e-throttle system because I know there's been a bunch of you asking about it. Um, what parts do you need for a drive-by wire system? How does it work? So I'm gonna show you that. I'm gonna show you what connectors you need, how the wiring works with it, how you can, you know, you can uh, make your Link ECU or whatever other ECU you have uh, pretty much kick ass. So if you haven't already, please give me a like, give me a follow. Uh, there's going to be a whole slew of videos coming up in the next few weeks. I know uh, a whole bunch of you guys were bugging me because I haven't posted a video for months, but I promise you, I've got all the time in the world right now. I'm going to be getting a whole ton of videos up there and I'm going to show you how to get this car all wired up ready for the ECU, all the sensors that need to go into there, and, uh, and then we're gonna get it running. 